Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be discussing the on-chain risk. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Link is in the description below. And again, that sale is going to end at the end of the month. So make sure you lock in the lower rate and you can keep it as long as you do not cancel. Let's go to jump in. So I want to talk a little bit here about the on-chain risk. Now, yesterday we spoke about the social risk, which is, you know, a very, I think a very interesting way to look at the market. And it seems to me that, that other people tend to like the social risk aspect as well because it gives you insight into the market that you're not going to get by looking at the price. But in the same way, we know that crypto is, you know, gives us this ability to look on chain. Now, as always, on chain data is not always the most reliable as as certain things obviously could be manipulated to make it seem like something is happening on chain when really it's maybe just someone moving Bitcoin from one wallet to another uh, rather than anything more interesting than that. But when you combine a lot of different on-chain metrics and you normalize them between zero and one to come up with a risk score and then you combine all of them you actually get something that looks like this which again i i think is a fairly compelling way to to look at at bitcoin what you'll notice is that the on-chain risk here consists of several different indicators we have the mvrv z score the pure multiple the mvrv score the market cap, or sorry, the minor cap to thermo cap ratio, transaction fees, the market cap to thermo cap ratio, and the terminal price. So it includes a lot of different metrics. There's also a couple others we could add on if we wanted to. There's the R HODL ratio or R HODL ratio. If you want to turn that one on, you can and see kind of how it affects the on chain risk. And there's also the supply and profit and loss that you can turn on if you want to, to see how that affects it. Now, just through, you know, my, you know, through our testing, I, I think it's probably better to keep these off. Uh, but I mean, the beauty of this is you can, you can turn on and, and off whatever, whatever your heart's desire to figure out, you know, what do you think is, is the most worthwhile sort of track in terms of the on-chain risk. Now, you might say, well, how do you use the on-chain risk metric? Like, well, what's the purpose of something like this? Well, as I've said before, the, the, the best way to navigate these markets is to have a DCA strategy and stick to it no matter what, right? That's the best strategy, to stick to it no matter what. No matter what anyone else says, right, including myself, right, you stick to your strategy no matter what. And, and, and this is why, you know, I, I continue to say this, I, I put out risk metric videos every every couple of months or so. And in general, the, the whole idea is the same, right? The, the idea is you DCA in at low risk levels and you DCA out at high risk levels. And it doesn't really need to be any more complicated than that, right? We can make it more complicated than that, but it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. And so right now the on-chain risk is at 0 0.309. So if you were to only use the on-chain risk as your gauge to go in and out of crypto, then what I would I would suggest is you pick a risk level and whenever the on-chain risk is above that level, you don't DCA. And when it's below that level, you do. More specifically, what I suggest is pick a level Again, it's not financial advice, right? But what I, what I would say is, is pick a level, pick a risk level, you DCA up to that, and then come up with sort of like a gray region where you don't do anything, right? You don't buy, you don't sell either. Because otherwise, let's say you pick 0.3 as you you, you you buy it. You buy below 0.3 or something, you sell above it. I mean, what happens if you just kind of oscillate around it for, for weeks? You're not going to want to just buy and sell on every other day, right? So you could have come up with a strategy where you DCA in up to you know, 0.2 risk, and then you might start selling some above a much higher risk level, right? Like 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Or maybe you're just someone that buys at low risk levels, and then you wait until the 0.9 to 1 wristband, and you don't care about anything else, right? I, I think there's some merit to that. Had you done that, you would have completely missed out on, on the secondary peak. But in hindsight, you know, 
who really cares, right? I mean, yes, it would have it would have been somewhat difficult for a few months had you completely exited the market over here. Uh, but in the end, I mean, I, I don't really think you would have been that concerned about it, given what ultimately came after it. Okay, so as I've mentioned before, the idea is to DCA in at low risk and a DCA out at high risk. And this is, you know, this is something that we've we've said time and time again. And and this is ultimately, you know, I, I think the best strategy, right? Rather than trying to identically time the bottom or identically time the top, you DCA out and DCA in. So the way that I do it specifically is dynamic DCA. So at the, the lower the risk level, then theoretically you put more into the market. The higher the risk level, then theoretically you put less into the market, right? So if it's between zero to 0.1, then maybe you would put in like, you know, 5x, if it's between 0.1 to 0.2, maybe it's 4x, 0.2 to 0.3, it's 3x or something like that, and so on and so forth. And then if it goes up to, say, a certain risk level, then maybe you would sell Y, Bitcoin. If it's up to, say, 0 0.6 to 0.7, then maybe you do 2Y, and then 3Y, 4Y, and 5Y, and so, on and, so, and so on and so forth. That way, if you get a bubble like 2019, which was sort of a mini bubble, it would have allowed you to sell some but you certainly wouldn't have sold all of it just because you wouldn't have really known that it was going to top out at 14K. But in the same way, in early 2021, uh, had you taken some profits at the same risk level like 2019, had you sold everything, you would have missed out on what came after it, right? But if you only sold a small amount, then you still could have ridden the rest of the wave. And by the way, that's what I did. When, when Bitcoin was going up in this parabolic rally, I sold my Bitcoin into that parabolic rally in early 2021, and I sold it actually mostly to, to Ethereum because we know that Ethereum typically runs after Bitcoin runs after it puts in a new all-time high, right? So you can DCA out into something else that is, is very undervalued against Bitcoin. And at the time, you know, I mean, the ETH Bitcoin valuation was like, I mean, it was still like really low. I mean... You know, well below where it is today, um, and so it was a much a, a much more obvious play. So I mean, like last year, right? The the idea is to DCA in at low risk levels, and and you know we talk about this on ITC Premium all the time. The thing I talk about at the beginning of every episode is you know having those limit orders set down the wristband. So for me, I had a lot of limit orders, so I go by the total risk, um, but I had a lot of limit orders filled. Uh, between you know 0.1 to 0.2 risk and then we came back up and then we went back down and i had them refilled right so the idea is you know you dca in at low risk you dca out at high risk we'll of course always have academic discussions as to you know is it the bottom or is it not the bottom and i don't really know if we're going to have an answer to that until we definitively see you know how does everything play out with a theoretical recession there are warning signs there there's been warning signs in the past. They don't always lead to a recession, right? They can, and if it does, then we'll get to figure out how does Bitcoin behave in a recession. But we don't know yet. I mean, if you look at historical bottoms on the on-chain risk, there's three of them, right? And you know, this one occurred over here at, at right off of zero, like 0 0.003 risk. Uh, this next one here occurred at 0 0.0098 risk, really low risk levels. Right, this one was at 0 0.001 risk, and then so far this time it's gone down as low as you know about 0 0.04, 0 0.05. So it hasn't gone down as much as it normally does. It doesn't mean that it has to, but there's still a chance that you know later this year or something we could revisit those lower risk levels. You can see back in you know in 2015 we hit pretty low risk levels, we popped out, we came back into that lower risk band, we popped out again and came back into it again. In 2019, 2018 and 2019, we we're in this lowest risk band, we went up pretty far and then we came back down, almost back down to about 0.1 risk on for the on-chain risk. So a lot of times we will spend a, a decent amount of time in this risk band, we might visit it, you know, two or three times, um, over the span of, of 12 to 18 months between, you know, at near the end of the, the primary bear market year and then before you get to the halving, this is just what we historically see. So again, I will say, as always, the best strategy for Bitcoin is a DCA strategy based on a certain risk metric. It doesn't have to be one of mine. It can be one that you create. It can be something super simple, okay? 
There's plenty of things out there. But the hard part is is sticking to it no matter what, right? And and just tuning everything else out, tuning the news out, um, and and just running with that, and and then just being patient. You know, uh, this is what I've ultimately found to be the to, you know to be the best strategy for navigating crypto. Now, I will remind you that over the last 14, 15 months, the only crypto I've purchased is Bitcoin, right? It it, that, it is Bitcoin. It's the only thing I've purchased over the last. 14, 15 months. Uh, and you might say, well, why don't you think the altcoin market is 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 a good play too? Well, the short answer is no. I mean, I, I don't. I, I, I think that, you know, yes, they might get dragged up kicking and screaming on their on their USD pairs if Bitcoin USD goes up. But I think that a lot of altcoins are still overvalued against Bitcoin. I think a lot of them will continue to bleed against Bitcoin for months to come. And many of them will put in new lows uh, whether Bitcoin does or not, right? So if, if Bitcoin does not put in another low, um, let's say later this year, early next year, then a lot of altcoins probably still will. And if Bitcoin does put in a new low and it does go to say like closer to the zero risk on the on-chain risk, then just imagine what that would do to the altcoin market. So, you know, I will, I will continue to say that, you know, in, in terms of navigating crypto, the only real way I think is is to come up with a metric that you follow and and you just dca below a certain risk level and you dca out above a certain risk level right and it doesn't need to be more complicated than that and you know as far as as far as how far we've de come down here so far we've come down again to about 0.04 or so is as low as as low as we've gone um haven't gone quite to the actual zero level like we historically have done but we might not know if that's actually going to happen for you know quite some time uh, it's only ever obvious in hindsight right only ever obvious in hindsight so we'll continue to monitor this also if you're curious what they all look like we can go we can quickly go through them right so this is what it looks like for the mvrv z score right so you can see that historically it has has come down pretty low just off the bottom i mean this is one of those things where like when it's at low levels you know, you don't have to time it perfectly, right? Just a, a DCA strategy. And, and even in the summer, right? Even in the summer, I said like, you know, is it worth buying Bitcoin at 20K? And I, and I would say, well, yes. And someone said, well, why? If you think it's going to go lower in November. And I, I was a very adamant that Bitcoin would go lower at the end of the year, even though a lot of people thought June was the bottom. Um, and I said, well, and people said, well, why? Why would you, why would you DCA in at 20K if you think it's going to go lower? And the answer I gave, right, is, well, you know, first of all, you have to hedge, right? You don't always, you don't know what's going to happen. Second of all, if it does go lower, after that, it's probably going to go back up. And then you're not going to care anyways, right? So, like, the people that bought at 20K back in August don't really care now, right, even though it dumped to 15K. So, you know, let's suppose that even if Bitcoin were to drop back down to 14K or something, do you, do you really think the people that bought at 16K are going to really care if that eventually goes back up to 30K or 40K? Probably not, right? Probably not. So that's the reason why a DCA strategy ultimately is the best strategy. I've said this in every single risk metric video that we do. I do one every every month or two. Um, and I would, I would advise you to go back and watch those videos. And it, it's just the same message every single time. You also have the pure multiple risk that looks something like this, the MBRB risk, the minor cap to thermo cap ratio, uh, the minor cap to thermo cap ratio risk, the transaction fees risk, the market cap to thermo cap risk, terminal price risk, the R hodl ratio risk, supply and profit risk, right? So you see how all of them are made up. And then when you combine them all, it becomes the total on-chain risk for Bitcoin, which again, right now is at 0 0.309. Okay. So in the grand scheme of things, it, it still is at a relatively low risk level. But I mean, you know, this is one of those things where if it, if it comes back down, everyone who YOLOs in at 30K is going to feel wrecked for a while. Um, if it if it continues climbing the wall of worry right until we we talked about how risk assets can do well until you actually see economic d data start to really deteriorate or if you see the reacceleration of inflation i i think that by this point 
you know, as especially as we get later into Q2, Q3, and Q4, I have a feeling, I have a feeling inflation is going to really start to come back down. So I don't really, th I mean, I, I think the reacceleration of inflation risk was more so geared towards the early part of the year. We did see that to some degree, and I mean, it, it still hasn't technically completely gone away. But you know, the further we push out into this year, I think that risk is going to slowly subside. And then the main risk that markets are going to turn towards is, is well, how much has the Fed damaged the economy? And, you know, do we go into a recession? But furthermore, if we are going into a recession, how bad is it going to be? Is it going to be a mild recession or is it going to be a somewhat severe recession? I, I think you can find data to support both views. You can also find data to support the view of not having one. Um, I, I still think we're going to have one, but... I don't think we're. I don't think we've been in one yet. I, I think that if we are going to be able be in one, it, it still could easily be you know a few months away before it really before it really gears up. So we'll continue to follow this. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. Give the video a thumbs up. As always, make sure to uh, figure out something to use to to navigate crypto. And just follow it no matter what is 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 only going to be my advice. And and when I say that, I, I'm, I'm talking about Bitcoin, right? If you're following something based on an altcoin, there's always a good chance that altcoin never recovers. I mean, just look at look at what's going on with the dominance of Bitcoin. You can see that um, it, the dominance of Bitcoin does continue to go higher, despite everyone thinking that it won't. Uh, but it continues to slowly push higher. It's sucking in the liquidity from the altcoin market. And, and if Bitcoin USD were to have another move to the downside below its bull market support band, then then the altcoin market can can get de absolutely decimated in that in that environment. I, I've lived it many times. Um, I, I think that's going to be the environment we're going to be in in the second half of this year, which is only a couple, you know, really only starts a couple months from now. So um, yeah, that's my my view, of course, on Bitcoin and, and, and the altcoin market. And, and we will see, you know, how the how the year shapes up. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. Again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. You can get access to this risk metric as well as the social risk that we talked about and the price risk and the total indicator risk and so on and so forth. And, um, and that'll about wrap it up. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.